Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where today, as always, I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. We have a couple of Intel pieces to start off today's proceedings, the first of which is regarding the Cascade Lake X. So you may recall, if you cast your mind back, when Intel actually announced the Cascade Lake X, or more specifically the 10th gen Core X processors, um, last month, they said that it would be coming next month, that being of course November. Now they didn't say when in November it would be coming, but according to a report from PC DIY, they were planning on releasing them this week, the 5th of November to be exact, but at least according to what they have heard, it has now been pushed back to the last week of November. Unfortunately, we don't really know why Intel have done this, if indeed this report is accurate. There is some speculation that Intel could be waiting to see what AMD is doing in terms of its Threadripper third generation pricing, but personally, I don't know about that, because unless Intel is willing to take another price cut when they've already significantly reduced the price of this compared to the previous generation, that wouldn't really make a lot of sense to me, but... What other reason could there be? Well, there could be multitude. There could just be a last minute snag that just want to make sure it's all fine, or maybe they just want to announce it separate to AMD's Threadripper. It's entirely possible that this report is inaccurate and Intel always intended to announce it, or sorry, release it, sorry, should I say, at the end of the month. But regardless, according to the report, it's going to be the 25th of November that we will now see Cascade Lake X come out onto the market. But that's not the only Intel thing I have for you today. We also have a bit of an update regarding 10nm desktop chipsets. You may recall there was a report um, recently that we would be seeing 10nm desktop processors and it would be early next year and that was according to itworldcanada.com and now you can find their article linked in the description below this video and as you can plainly see there has now been an update to this Intel apparently contacted the website and basically said that yes 10nm desktops are being worked on but they don't actually have a timing for the desktop products yet so basically, they're not confident enough to even confirm that it will be early next year. So it could be mid, late, or even possibly not next year at all. Personally, I think it's, it is going to be next year if, um, if Intel are working on it, which obviously they have confirmed that they are. But either way, Intel did not feel comfortable confirming that early next year. But at least it's nice to know that, yep, they exist. We are going to be getting 10nm desktop chipsets. But let's move on, shall we, from Intel to AMD, as we have yet another MindFactory.de report. And I highly doubt these reports need any introduction, really, to any of you who've watched this channel for a while. They're, of course, the largest retailer, digital retailer, sorry, in Germany, and they have been releasing monthly um, figures regarding number of CPUs sold, revenue, etc., etc., and AMD has had a solid lead for a long time, let's just put it that way. And it has not changed for the month of October. We have seen a very, and I do mean very slight decrease of 1% versus September. So pretty much margin of error stuff. But in terms of the raw numbers that we see, in terms of number of CPUs sold, we see 78% being AMD and 22% of course going to Intel. Now what does this mean in terms of revenue? Well, as we've seen across the previous months, it is a little closer here. Um, it was much closer in, say, like the sort of April, May, June months where AMD were still in the lead significantly in terms of number of CPUs sold, but much closer in terms of revenue. But even here, the disparity is definitely in AMD's favour, as we see 73% um, revenue versus 27% going to Intel. Again, a 1% decrease for AMD and a 1% increase for Intel, uh, respectively, versus last month. But as you guys will undoubtedly be familiar with by now, we also have information on exactly what they have sold, you know, what has made up these impressive figures for AMD. Unsurprisingly, a large portion of their CPUs sold have been Matisse, that being Ryzen 3000, it's 55%. 30% being Pinnacle Ridge, and we have Summit Ridge, Raven Ridge, and Threadripper making up a small percentage, you know, 3%, 5%, that sort of thing. And Picasso is 7%. As for Intel, the Coffee Lake refresh, refresh excuse me, is 79% and 17% for Coffee Lake the original. Cable Lake is 3%, as is Skylake X. As for revenue, we see Matisse for AMD 
be strongly in the lead here, unsurprisingly, given the price cuts that we've seen to Zen Plus and, of course, the original Zen. We 70, 74% for Matisse here, and 19% for Pinnacle Ridge, 4% for Picasso, and the same for Threadripper, Summer Ridge, and Raven Ridge. As for Intel, we do see 84% going to the Coffee Lake Refresh, and 10% to Coffee Lake itself, and then 3% to Sky Lake X and KB Lake X. So essentially the TLDR of all of that is AMD's strong lead when it comes to MineFactory.de's results is continuing. And that goes on top of, of course, their market share results that we have seen. They have unsurprisingly changed significantly with the release of Ryzen 3000. I think the price cuts that Intel have made are definitely going to make some headway here. We might see the gap between the two companies close, but I do not think that Intel are going to swap these positions anytime soon until they just basically play catch up. You know, they are only just now getting to 10 nm, and obviously we're still not seeing desktop processors until next year, whereas obviously AMD are on 7. Now, obviously, as you guys know, it's not all about just the pure nm versus nm, but it obviously is a factor and a fairly important factor. But it's just performance per dollar, you know, how much you actually get for your money, all that sort of thing. And AMD have just been on absolute tear with Ryzen for quite some time. And Ryzen 3000 have just basically increased the lead that they have had basically for the entire year. Pretty much every time I've done a segment on one of these reports, AMD have been in the lead significantly. Less so in terms of revenue, at least until Ryzen 3000 came out. So again, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens when we see 10 nm desktop processors come out. We may see this gap become much, much closer. We, It is definitely possible that it will flip and Intel will regain its lead, but I definitely think it's not going to be easy for the company to do so. And our final AMD topic is actually regarding a tweet from Bob Marston. And he basically said, quote, I just completed listening to the AMD third quarter conference call. There are a number of items I will address, but for now we'll call your attention to one of the biggest points in the call that was made by, at the very outset, by Devinder Kumar. AMD retired $200 million of debt. AMD is now cash positive, holding more money in assets than it owes to creditors. The ramp of Zen is still in its formative stages. So basically, they're now firmly in the black. But we are finally done with AMD for this video today, my friends, and we're going to move on now to their bestest buddies, TSMC. And we have Bloomberg to thank for this very interesting report, and of course you can find their article linked in the description below this video. And according to their report, the TSMC chairman Mark Liu said that basically they are not planning on shifting their production outside of Taiwan, Taiwan, sorry, excuse me, because, well, it just would cost too much to produce their products in the US. They obviously have established factories in their home country, and if they were to move things over to the United States, they would pretty much be starting from year zero. And while they're already struggling to keep up with demand for the entirety of next year, just to the crazy success of their 7nm processors, so now is not really the time to be starting from scratch. So you can't really blame TSMC for this one, at least for the foreseeable future. TSMC are going to continue to invest into Taiwan rather than shifting production to the US, um, which apparently was requested due to some security concerns over their chips. Not surprising, but still interesting nonetheless. But let's move on, shall we, to something that I think is going to please many, many of you watching this video regarding Crisis. Now, Crisis has obviously become a bit of a meme over the years, not so much anymore, but, you know, but can it run Crisis was basically the test of all PCs. You know, is your PC good enough? Can it run Crisis? And obviously, while Crytek did have a bit of a icky time, shall we say, not too long ago, there are rumblings going around that we would be seeing a Crisis remaster. Now, of course, this is not the first time that this rumour has done the rounds on the internet. They did a teaser for their CryEngine 5.6 tech trailer um, a few months ago. And there is a link to it in the description below if you want to watch it um, with all the sound and everything, or of course it is playing in this particular segment. So, basically, if you're... If you have a keen eye, you'll notice that there are some key locations that will look very similar to the one where you first land in Crisis. even has some parts of the original Crisis soundtrack. And basically, this has stirred rumours once again that, well, we're going to be seeing a Crisis remaster. And EA have kind of lent credence to this a little, and I do mean a little, because they did mention remaking a bunch of its classic games. They did say during their recent earnings call they have plans to launch, quote, exciting remasters of fan favourites in 2021. Now, obviously, we already know they're doing Command & Conquer, 
that's definitely something I'm personally looking forward to. That's going to be pretty awesome. But I would say Crisis could definitely be a possibility. Now, this is purely a rumour, kind of based on conjecture of something spotted in a trailer. Um, I don't know if you'd really call that solid at all, but I think it would be pretty smart of EA to do this, and I think it would go down very, very well. And in fact, I'd love to hear your opinions on this. Would you like to see a Crisis remaster? Let me know in the comments. But regardless, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.